Hey guys, John here from Gaming in the Wild. Welcome to the first episode of a new video series about cult hit indie games that you shouldn't pass up on. In each episode of this series, I will highlight some wonderful indie games that could be described as cult classics or hidden gems, games that I found to be truly wonderful experiences, but that could have found a wider audience. Uh, I really hope you enjoy this video. It's a bit of an experiment. If you do like it, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. There is also a Patreon, which I will give more details about at the end. So with that, let's get into the first pick, a lo-fi voxel souls-like called Bleak Sword DX. So Bleak Sword DX is an 8-bit pixel voxel souls-like with blocky graphics in a very stark palette of black, white, and red. It's made by a solo developer from Spain called More 8-Bit, um, it's a game with small, tough arena combat levels, varied and interesting bosses, and some nice variation and surprises along the way. It is very tricky, but very rewarding. Um, and this game is an interesting one. It launched on Apple Arcade for mobile only, and so it found a limited audience at the time. I played it back then, and it played surprisingly well with one-handed swipe controls. You swipe to dodge roll, tap for a light attack, and hold for a heavy attack. Um, but trust me, that's better than it sounds. It's actually quite precise. I was fiercely addicted to it until I cracked that final boss. It did eventually break out of Apple Arcade with the release of Bleak Sword DX, a version that came with controller support on Switch and Steam. Um, so there's never been a better time to try it out. You can play it on controller now. That is Bleak Sword DX. And the second pick here is a personal favourite of mine called In Other Waters. It was developed by Jump Over the Age, the pseudonym of Gareth Damien Martin, who became an indie dev star with the release of Citizen Sleeper. Uh, but this is their first game, released back in 2020, and it is equally worthy of your time. It's a narrative-heavy exploration game set on an oceanic alien planet called Glyce 667cc. You play as an AI who's assisting a stranded xenobiologist that is, someone who's studying alien flora and fauna. It's their mission to solve a missing person mystery. Uh, but there's a twist to it. You see the world as an AI might, which means there is no glorious subnautica-like 3D world. We look at this game through charts and maps, topography, blueprints and UI only, with text descriptions of the world and written dialogue from the human you're assisting, Dr. Ellery Vass. So it plays like a hybrid tabletop game and text adventure with the incredibly talented Gareth Damien Martin as your DM. The controls are a little clunky and they take a bit of getting used to, but the texts are poetic in this game and it really does evoke an underwater ecosystem. It has an immersive soundtrack, uh, pun fully intended, by Amos Ruddy, one of the best composers in the biz. It's an oddball game, it's a curveball game, but it is an underrated cult classic that deserves the same kind of attention as Citizen Sleeper would get later down the line. It's out on Switch, and as I am speaking now, it's also 70% off on Steam. It's a heavy recommend from me, so dive on in to In Other Waters. The next game I have for you is called Cloud Gardens. You might see a bit of a pattern forming here in terms of music being a core part of a game's appeal to me. I find music to be very important in creating a mood and an atmosphere and connecting with the world. Amos Roddy did the soundtrack for this one as well. Um, it's a voxel-based light puzzle game that's almost as much of a relaxing virtual sculpture toy. Um, you are presented with a series of dreamy pastel-coloured 3D dioramas of post-human environments like rail yards, bridges and tower blocks. Each one has different seeds that you can discover and different planting spots. Um, you have to get to know the plants, where to plant them, how they thrive, and then you make them grow by dropping objects into the scene. Um, it's gorgeous to look at, very relaxing to play. There is something melancholic about it, but also beautiful. Um, as you rewild these desolate scenes, it's very satisfying and it's a very mellow, zen-like game experience. So much so that it made my Games of the Year list in 2020. So it's a heavy recommend from me. That's Cloud Gardens, available now on Switch, Steam and Xbox. <laughs> The last two games I have for you are lesser-known titles by high-profile studios. Um, the first of the two is Pyre, 
the least known game by Supergiant, the makers of Bastion, Transistor, and Hades. Um, I'm always surprised by how few people have played this one. It is maybe the black sheep of the Supergiant family. Um, I like all of their games a lot, but I think Pyre is actually the most creatively ambitious and inspired game they've made. It is a hybrid party-based RPG with the added curveball of a wizard sport sports game that you have to engage in. It starts when you're found by a group of travelers in a sprawling wilderness called The Downside. You are quickly drafted into their party and you embark on a journey together through a really colorful, intriguing world. And you get to know all the members of your party along the way and you meet a lot of new ones. And as you make your way through The Downside, you will play against opposition teams in bouts of the rights. This is a fun three-a-side magic basketball kind of sports game. You can win or lose each match and still continue. Um, and it has a vast variety of branching paths that evolve based on your wins and losses and the character decisions you make along the way. And um, the endings are quite varied and account for every possibility. And um, there is even a versus mode if you'd like to play locally against a friend. Um, this game has astonishingly good visuals by the very talented Gen Z and a Darren Corb soundtrack. I found it to be utterly engrossing and the endings had some real emotional heft to them too. This game is often on sale for just a few bucks, so pull on your raiments, get ready to make some bog witch dunks, and play a bit of weirdo wizard ball in Pyre. And the final game on this list is a 2019 game. It is Heaven's Vault by Inkle, a studio that makes story-forward branching outcome games like 80 Days and the Sorcery series. Um, they pushed their formula further in Heaven's Vault. It's a sci-fi investigation game in which you play a space-faring linguist and archaeologist who is exploring a storied solar system. You travel between different planets, navigating a network of celestial rivers. You land your ship and explore sites of interest where you can walk around, investigate, talk to people, and along the way you discover fragments of an alien language and gradually build up your lexicon to try and understand ancient tablets and to get to the bottom of some secrets of an alien race that is long gone. Um, it's a very fun mini game. You learn to recognize and intuit the meanings of letters, uh, which can be challenging, but it's very rewarding. It's a really wonderful feeling when everything starts to slot into place. It really simulates that feeling of making important breakthroughs in your work. It's out on Steam, PS4 and Switch, and if you enjoyed games like Outer Wilds and Tunic, you might well fall in love with Heaven's Vault. So those are my first five underrated cult classic indie game picks. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did in the comments or if you think there's something I could do better. Um, I'd love to hear your cult classic indie game picks too. There are a lot of great games out there and we can all help each other find the really good ones that we might have missed. If you did like the video, please like, subscribe and share. Um, there's also a Patreon if you would like to support this channel for as little as a dollar a month. Um, you can get bonus episodes and you'll also get an invite to the patron discord to talk to me suggest games and meet all of the other patrons of the show it's a really good time a really friendly corner of the internet there's a link in the description if you would like to do that so with all of that said thanks very much for watching take care of yourselves and each other and i'll see you in the next one